Screen Directors Playhouse stars Joan Caulfield, John Lund. Production, Lady Takes a Chance. Director, William Siter. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. And by the makers of Amazon for fast relief from the pain of headaches, neuritis, and neuralgia. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present transcribed for the first time on the air, a classic in comedy. Our story is Lady Takes a Chance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are our stars, John Lund and Joan Caulfield. Thank you, Jimmy. It's a pleasure to be co-starring with Joan Caulfield. Uh, This is your first appearance on Screen Director's Playhouse, isn't it, Joan? Yes, John. And I'm particularly happy that we're going to do a comedy originally produced by my husband, Frank Ross. And Frank and I are both happy over the fact that you're going to be the co-star. For ladies and gentlemen, with John Lund playing opposite her, no lady takes a chance. Thank you, Miss Caulfield. And now, before we present the first act, here's a word from RCA Victor. Just up the street or around the corner from your home is a man who provides a very important service to you and your neighbors. He's your local radio and television serviceman. Yet, curiously enough, the importance of his services is not fully recognized until your radio or television set develops trouble. And then he's needed, just as a policeman or a doctor or a fireman is needed when the occasion arises. And like these other community servants, your neighborhood repairman has the experience and equipment to provide you with prompt, dependable service. Now, for example, if your television set requires a new picture tube, he'll recommend a genuine RCA picture tube. Your repairman knows from experience that an RCA picture tube will give you the clearest, sharpest picture your set is capable of delivering. He'll tell you, in fact, that television is an RCA development. So next time your set develops trouble... Regardless of its make, model, or size, rely on your local radio television technician for fast economical repair. And don't forget to ask him for genuine RCA tubes and parts. And then you're sure of enjoying the very best that your television set has to offer. Now the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Lady Takes a Chance, starring Joan Caulfield as Molly and John Lund as Duke. (laughs) Wonders of the West, 14 breathless days, all expenses paid, only $137.50. Well, that was the ad for Rainbow Tours which set Molly J. Truesdale to saving $3 a week until she had amassed the cost of her ticket. And Molly, escaping even temporarily from New York and her humdrum existence as a bank teller, counting other people's money, was already breathless when she boarded her bus, as was her seatmate, Flory Bendix. Oh, gee, are all three of those fellows who kissed you goodbye boyfriends? Uh-huh. Gee... If I had three boyfriends in New York, I'd look at the wonders of the West on a stereopticon. And I'd spend my hundred and thirty seven fifty on a hope chest. I guess some people are just different from other people. Yeah, particularly fellows and girls, huh? Say, uh, <laughs> you know, I hope you don't think I'm forward for speaking first and then introducing myself, but I'm Flory Bendix. Of course not. I'm Molly J. Truesdale. After all, one of us had to speak first, so what's the difference which one? You're absolutely right. Well, how do you like the trip so far? Well, of course, we haven't left the bus station yet, but so far, I think it's wonderful. Not me. I wish I'd known. 
I bet I wouldn't have come. Why not? Why not? Look at the no fellas on the bus. <laughs> yeah, well, how can you have 14 breathless days with no fellas? <laughs> I think it'll be wonderful. Hello, everybody. Well, I still oh, say... Sh- Glory, the huh? guide wants to tell us something. Uh-huh. Hello, hello. I'd like to have your attention, folks, for just a minute. You're going to have my attention for the next 14 days, so it isn't too much to ask, is it? <laughs> no, no. That's what I thought. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Smiley Lambert, but you folks can call me Smiley Lambert. <laughs> Nothing. Now, I'm going to pass among you and get acquainted. If you have any complaints, now's the time to mention them, because by the end of the trip, you will have forgotten them. <laughs> Not with him alone, I won't. Sorry. Well, I heard that, young lady. Now, I've got a feeling you don't like me right now, but that's all right. I'll grow on you. <laughs> oh. And uh, who's this sitting beside you? Might as well tell me, or I'll look you up on my seating chart. I'm Miss Truesdale. Should be Miss Sex Appeal, eh, folks? <laughs> I'll be back and see you later. Now, uh, five seconds now, folks, and we'll be off on the smoothest, easiest, comfortablest, smoothest, easiest ride that you've ever had. Okay, driver, let her go. <laughs> folks and shake hands with your neighbors. <laughs> and hang on to your hat. <laughs> you were off. What are you thinking about, Molly? This wonderful country we're seeing. Hmm. I'm thinking about fellas. I know. Yeah? How? Well, there aren't many secrets between seatmates after almost a week on a bus. Besides, you haven't talked about anything else, Flory. Scenery and sights, sights and scenery. Take a gander, folks. If you're really interested in just any fellow, Flory, I'm sure that Smiley's available. Oh, as a matter of fact, he doesn't look look nearly as repulsive as he did five days ago. (laughs) Look at that view, Flory. The mountains and the sky and the trees. And... Well, can you honestly think of anything more beautiful than Oregon, Flory? Yeah. A sort of not me bull legged, bald headed single fella. <laughs> Who is interested in me? Frankly, Molly, I find this the most unsatisfactory trip. I overheard that remark, Miss Bendix, and I'm going to take great pleasure in listening to you retract that statement. What happens? Do we change tour guides? <laughs> no, we reach Fairfield, Oregon We arrive 1 p.m., depart 10 p.m. They're having a rodeo there And the town will be full of cowboys Down closer to the chutes. I want to get a good picture of one of these riders. Next rider will be Duke Hudkins on five minutes to midnight, riding out a chute four. Oh, hurry, Flory. I see an opening in the crowd right next to the field. Yeah, but people get hurt down there, you know. Oh, I'm just going to take a picture. Here they come, folks. Duke Hudkins on five minutes to midnight. <laughs> we, we just made it. Oh, now if I can just get him in focus. Oh, darn. Uh, what's wrong? Well, that silly horse keeps jumping up and down. Well, sure, it's bucking. Well, it might try bucking a little closer so that I can get a decent picture. Yes, yeah, must have heard you. Right Why, oh, it's getting much clearer. Yeah, if it gets any more clearer, the horse will be taking a picture of you. Oh, this is wonderful, Flory. I'll call it America in Action. Oh, the rider's moving a stir up. <laughs> American action here. Must have thought you were a subversive. He sure smacked you down. I want you to get up your big lug and let the lady rise. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hit you, too. I'm glad I was there to break your fall. Your what? Here, here, let me help you. Oh, thank you. 
thank you. That's very nice of you, I'm sure. She must be hurt worse than I thought. She hates fellas. Are you all right? Oh, sure. You sure you ain't busted any place? Well, pretty sure. Oh, I'm sure she's had her brains jawed loose. <laughs> hey, is there a psychiatrist in the stand? Well, okay then. So long. Hey, hey, Mr. Cowboy. You call me, lady? Yeah, wait a second. Well, what can I do for you? Would you mind giving me your autograph? Uh, what's that? Well, you just signed my Rodeo program for a kind of souvenir. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't mind. Oh, this is certainly one of those breathless days they advertise. Yeah, hey, yeah. Uh... Oh, let me see. Duke Hudkins. Thank you very much, Mr. Hudkins. I don't get sat on every day. Well, <laughs> goodbye, I guess. Did, 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 you, did you get his phone number, Molly? Hmm? Well, no, just his autograph. I, I was hoping he'd ask for mine and that, well, well, one thing might lead to another. Yeah, I'd been thinking that for ten years. <laughs> hey, lady. Who, who, me? Uh, no, your friend. Who, me? Yeah, can I borrow your rodeo program? Oh, anything, mister. Oh, anything. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, can I have your autograph? Mine? You want my autograph? No, your friend's. Uh, Mine? Oh, gee, Mr. Hudkins, I don't see why. Well, I don't sit on people every day. Oh. And I just got to thinking that... Uh... Well, uh, there you are. Oh, thanks. I don't know if you can read it very well. My signature's kind of fancy. Molly J. Truesdale. Well... Uh, what's your name, miss? A Flora Bendix could be changed. <laughs> well, now, who'd want to change a nice name like that? Yeah, who? <laughs> no fellow, that's for sure. Well, thanks for the use of your program, Flory. Well, don't you want her autograph? No, I got her name. Come on, Molly. Uh, see you, Flory. Well, where are we going? Oh, have a beer or something? Gee, a beer. So long, Molly. So long, Flory. See you at the bus. Yeah. I'll be the gal admiring Smiley. <laughs> Isn't it funny the things that can happen just because somebody sits on somebody? Mm hmm. Where are you from? East. Is that so? <laughs> Where are you from? West. <laughs> oh, is that so? Let's go in here. Sit down. Gee, thanks. You like beer? I don't know. I never had any. You'll like it. Two beers, Mabel. Well, I must say that this is certainly an extra added attraction. How's that? Well, there was nothing like this included in the all expenses paid, at least not in the folder. Oh? Do you mind if I feel your muscle? Huh? <laughs> this arm. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now, uh, what was that for? I was just comparing eastern muscles and western muscles. Oh? They aren't putting that kind of muscle in arms back east anymore. Now, here's a word for discriminating smokers. Science discovered it. You can prove it. No unpleasant aftertaste when you smoke Chesterfields. The biggest plus in cigarette history. Added to Chesterfields' world-famous ABCs. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. Only Chesterfield gives you all that. Plus the added pleasure of no unpleasant aftertaste. Science discovered it. The country's first and only cigarette taste panel reported that of all brands tested, 
Only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. You can prove it. Smoke a pack of Chesterfields. You'll find Chesterfields taste better while you smoke them. And after smoking, no unpleasant aftertaste. The biggest plus in cigarette history. Buy Chesterfields today. Now the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Lady Takes a Chance, starring John Lund and Joan Caulfield. When a Rodeo bronc tossed Duke Hudkins off his back, Molly Truesdale was there to break Duke's fall. And while the chance encounter ruined Molly's camera, it completely repaired Molly's shattered faith in cross-country tour advertising. For as far as Molly was concerned, Duke was the personification of the tour's heralded breathless days. At the moment, Molly and Duke are seated in a tavern, looking at each other and liking what they see. Oh, thanks. Ah. Aren't you going to drink your beer? Oh, I didn't even notice it was here. Maybe you don't like beer. Oh, no. No? I mean, well, let me drink it and see. Oh, it tastes sort of like pop, doesn't it? How's that? Oh, in a much different way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Waco! Yeah, Duke? Come on over here. I want you to meet Waco. He's my better half. What's wrong, Duke? Well, nothing. Why? All your gals are asking how you hurt. Oh, no, no, not a bit. It's nice of them to ask, though. Yeah. Waco, this is Molly. Good to see you, Molly. How you been? Very well, thank you. I don't believe I got your name. Waco. Like in Texas. Oh, isn't that interesting? Well, how did you happen to get named after some place in Texas? Other way around. <laughs> <laughs> He's the biggest liar in the world, Molly. Oh, well, when he mentioned all your girls, well, I thought maybe I was intruding. No. They won't mind. <laughs> well, then you, you do have several girls. Oh, sure, sure. You'll meet them all when they drop in. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Hudkins. What's the matter? What's the matter? What do you think what's the matter? Well, I don't know what I think what's the matter. Well, then it doesn't matter. Look, when I take a girl places, it's kind of unusual if she don't have a good time. I'm sorry you haven't. I'm sorry, too. Uh, would you like to give me another chance? Well, it wouldn't do you any good if all your girls were around. Well, I know a place where my girls won't find me. Really? Yeah. Did you give me another chance? All right. I have to have something to do until the bus leaves. <laughs> And it's seven again. Hey, kiss the dice again for luck, Molly. Add a girl. Ha! Oh, is my point. Kiss him again, Molly. Little Joe. Ha! Right back. How much does that give us, Molly? Two, three, two hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Aren't you sure? Positive. Well, let's shoot the bundle. Uh, not if the girl kisses the dice. What do you mean? We got a twenty-five dollar limit here. Since when? Look, why don't you start over and let the lady roll the dice? Well, <laughs> okay. Roll them, Molly. All right. I'll, I'll try my best. What's the limit for her? 25. Okay. Shooting 25. I don't feel that lucky, Duke. Okay. Shooting 15. I don't feel that lucky, Duke. Okay. Shoot five. Uh, mister, make up your mind, huh? Now, take it easy, mister. The switch in the dice was your idea. Gee, Duke, I don't feel lucky at all. Okay, then we'll just shoot a buck. A buck? Look, Mac, where do you think you're playing? In a clip joint. Go ahead, Molly, roll them. There you see, Duke. Snake eyes. Jumping Jehoshaphat. Don't never leave me, Molly. Don't never leave me. Dice still belong to the lady. She don't want them, thanks. Come on, Molly. 
Let's do something different. Golly, I, I just about think this is the most interesting afternoon and evening I've ever spent. Ah, this wasn't nothing. Well, gee, what more could happen? Winning all that money and drinking cactus milk and the big fight and everything... Well, Rainbow Tours certainly gave me my money's worth today. Oh, you got the time. My bus leaves at 10. Well, according to my watch, you're okay. Uh, <clears throat> you, uh, married? Well, my gosh, if I was, would I be doing this? Why, what are you doing? <laughs> Why, this? You're not married. No. Of course, I don't want you to get the impression that I haven't been asked. I have. Well, what happened? Oh, I just never met the right fellow, that's all. You married? Nope. Of course, I uh, don't want you to get the impression I ever asked anybody. <laughs> Why not? Don't believe in it. Oh. Well, lots of people are married, and they seem to like it fine. Oh, no, they don't. They just make out they like it because they're ashamed to admit they made a mistake. Well, I, I think I think we'd better go put me on my bus. Well, you're the boss. Come on. Isn't that the bus station? Yep. There isn't anyone around. We must be early. Yep. I'm usually early for buses. Trains, too. That's how I am. Good way to be. Well, if you ever come east, New York, or... I'll call you. Oh, Dunbar, 35678. <laughs> if you call around 6, I'll be there. Well, I might not be heading east for a year. Well, I'll be there if you call around... Six. Six. All right. Oh, I wonder where that bus is. Well, maybe it's in back of the station. Maybe we better go in this... Hey! What? My suitcase. Where? In there on the bus station floor. But the station door's locked. You don't suppose the bus went and left before 10 o'clock? How do you know that's your suitcase? I can see my pink pajamas hanging out. <laughs> I always leave my pink pajamas hanging out so I'll know which suitcase is mine. <laughs> Hey, open the door. Hey, 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 the man's coming. You can stop pounding. Yep. Uh, look at mister. I want to ask... Who's the uh, lady with the rainbow tour? What happened to my bus? Well, they left your suitcase. Said to tell you that... What's the idea of them leaving before 10 o'clock like they said? Huh? You must have had a right good time, lady. I did. Well, what do you mean? Uh, according to bus time, which is Pacific Standard, it's 20 minutes after 12. Oh, no. That's what the clock on that wall says, Molly. Well, what am I going to do? Uh, the guide said to tell you you can catch the bus when it gets to coming back. Back? Yep. Come back through Gold City. Why, well, we're playing Gold City Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You can catch a bus there Saturday, 8 a.m. But I'll, I'll miss the Columbia Gorge and the Pacific Ocean and the Puget Sound and... The waterfalls of seven delights. Lots of folks has missed them. <laughs> Me and Waco are driving to Gold City tomorrow. All that way across the country, sitting down, and what do I get for it? Gold City. Good night, lady. Don't forget your bag. Oh, Duke, you don't know how I've been counting on the waterfalls of seven delights. Oh, they ain't anything. But when you've never ever seen a, even seen a waterfall with one delight... Oh, well, I guess I better go find a hotel. You, uh, might have a little trouble. Why? Well, with a rodeo in town, the hotel's usually full. Oh, dear. But, uh, you can have Waco's in my room. Well, where will you sleep? Oh, I don't usually have much trouble. Let's go. Do. Huh? I just wish all ladies in distress could meet up with fellas like you. It's 
a lovely room, Duke. Oh, I'm glad you like it. It doesn't seem fair, though, to put Waco out when he didn't sit on me or anything. Oh, he's used to it. <laughs> Why did you close the door? Why not? Now, uh, you like your whiskey straight or with a little water? <laughs> whiskey? Duke! Well, what's the matter? Well, I, I don't like that look in your eye. That look is just for you, Molly. Well, well couldn't you save it for somebody else? Molly, <laughs> are oh, oh, you trembling? Oh, please let me go, Duke, please. Well, now, what's the matter? Oh, don't. Well, now, listen, honey. Oh, just because you sat on me doesn't give you any right to... Any right to what? I was only trying to kiss you good night. Well, good night. I'll tell Mr. Waco he can have his room back. Hey, where are you going? I can sleep in the park, can't I? All they've got out there is bears and hyenas. Do you ever have a bear kiss you goodnight? <laughs> no. A friend of mine did. We called him No Nose Jackson. <laughs> Next time you manage to have a cow hand thrown on you, brush him off before he gets the wrong impression. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A N A C I N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist's. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by RCA Victor... World leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Lady Takes a Chance, starring Joan Caulfield and John Lund, We'll continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of Lady Takes a Chance, starring John Lund as Duke and Joan Caulfield as Molly. When Duke Hudkins attempted to kiss her goodnight, Molly ordered him out of his own room. Well, this morning, ashamed of her misunderstanding, she's unable to face Duke and his partner, Waco. So she's standing out at the edge of Fairfield, attempting to catch a ride to Gold City, where she can once again board her bus. A car is approaching her. Hop in, Molly. No, thank you, Mr. Hudson. I told you last night we're driving right to Gold City. I'll get a ride to Gold City. You've done enough for me. 
Okay. But I'm warning you, there isn't much through traffic on this road. The gal's wacky, Waco. Why? Because she said no? She ain't my type. Too suspicious. She's real pretty. She's wacky. I suppose. Still, I gotta admit, Duke, I feel kind of sorry for the poor little type, all alone, big heavy suitcase. You, uh, want me to turn around? Try again? Well, it wouldn't hurt. This is a great road to try and turn a horse trailer on. Well, we could unhitch the trailer. And leave Sammy here? Well, I'd let her walk every step of the way before I'd leave Sammy here. Just thought I'd save you some work. I can handle it. Hold it. Wise guy. Wise gal. Huh? Molly was in that great, big, beautiful car. <laughs> she turned back the way it was going. Take it easy, Duke. Oh, what are you afraid of? Nothing in particular, but uh, with just one headlight, you can't see so good in the dark. Yeah, that's better. Hey, what's that up ahead? Uh Uh-oh. Looks like that big, big, beautiful car ain't going all the way to Gold City. Uh, nuts to her. Molly? Yeah, but I'm not going to stop. You'd leave her out here in the middle of nowhere at night? Anywhere, anytime. Oh, I didn't know you was that going on her. Who's going on who? Well, there can't be any other reason for being afraid to stop and pick up a little girl. I'm not afraid to stop. I bet you won't get in. You lose, Duke. Huh? Thank you for stopping. Thank you very, very much. No, don't mention it. Now, maybe Duke will stop someplace and eat. <laughs> Them beans tasted even better than Friola's. I must say, Mr. Hudkins, this is a very peculiar place to stop. Very. Well. Considering, Mr. Hudkins, how we passed up several very attractive auto camps. Slammy don't like garages. And your life is governed by what a horse likes, I see. Never forget the time, the first time I beat off several hundred engines. I was trapping with Kit Carson a day. No, no. I was working as sheriff in a Royal Roger picture at the time. <laughs> Clean up the tinware, will you, Waco? No, just when I was about to tell Molly. Yeah, one of your lies. No. Anything you say, Duke. I'll tell you about it later, Molly. It ought to make a real interesting story. In fact, I'm anxious to hear about it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Miss Truesdale. Is there any good reason for you and me sitting around here insulting each other? I insulted you, Mr. Hudkins. I'm sorry. Now quit calling me Mr. Hudkins. Anything else I might call you, Mr. Hudkins, would hardly be appropriate for a lady to utter. What did I ever do to you? Oh, nothing, Mr. Hudkins, not a thing. Well, uh, is that what you're mad about? What? <laughs> <laughs> this is all washed, Waco. Well, I didn't, don't exactly wash them. <laughs> I noticed. I could keep them a lot cleaner if I had a dog. Too late to talk, Waco. Time to get to bed. Hope you don't mind sleeping on the same desert with me, Miss Tuesdale. He's pretty fresh, isn't he, Waco? You don't know the half. Funny. Last night for a while, I thought he was the nicest fellow I'd ever met. Yep. He generally has that effect on him, at first. Here's a blanket for you, Miss Tuesdale. If you wrap yourself in it and curl up by the fire, it'll keep you from freezing anyway. Thank you, Mr. Hudkins. I'm sorry I can't give you this heavy one. It's for Sammy. The horse? Sure. Come here, Sammy. <laughs> Miss Truesdale, this is Sammy. How do you do, I'm sure? Sammy, this is Miss Truesdale. <laughs> oh, come on, come on now. Quit showing off and hold still. It's bedtime. You have to have this blanket on you. You're welcome. 
Ah, there you are. Go on now. Eat your head off. Good night, boy. Well, aren't you going to put a rope on him? How would you like me to put a rope on you? Well, I wouldn't. Well. But I'm not a horse. What's the difference? (laughs) Not to me. At least not about a thing like that. I don't like ropes. Good night, Miss Tuesdale. Good night, Mr. Hudkins. How can they snore like that? How can they keep warm enough to sleep well enough to snore like that? Oh, one thin little blanket. Wouldn't keep a horse warm. A horse! Sammy? Sammy? It's Miss Truesdale, Sammy, remember? Mr. Hudkins, Duke introduced us. I need your blanket, Sammy. Well, I'm sorry, Sammy, but it's you or me, and you have a horse hide coat. What's that? Sammy! What'd you do with your blanket, Sammy, you doggone fool? What's all the commotion? Holy smokes! You! What? Ain't you got no respect for nothing? Stealing a horse's blanket? Oh, well, of all the silly things I ever Waco! Heard. Yeah, Duke? Sammy, sneeze. Start the car. Huh? Get going. We gotta get to Gold City in a bet fast. What's wrong with Sammy, Doc? Can't tell for sure yet. Maybe it's just a cold. Maybe it's pneumonia. Pneumonia? I didn't know horses could get pneumonia. Well, do. Do everything you can, Doc. Yeah, I'll do my best, mister. You got a fine horse. Yeah. Duke. Oh, Duke, it was my fault. If anything should happen, well, I don't know what I can do. It's all right, Molly. You didn't know. It's been nice knowing you. Duke, I... Goodbye. Goodbye. See you at the Reno, Waco. Okay, boy. I was right about him, Waco. Hmm? He's the most unusual man I've ever met. Sure is. He certainly is the right fella. For the right girl. Huh? Or, uh, so long, Molly. Oh, I'm not leaving just yet. You better. No, I'll stay here with Sammy. Then I can let Duke know if anything happens or... Uh, Molly, uh, I want to give you some advice. What? Go home. Well, I'm going when my bus comes back through here tomorrow. Don't wait for it, Molly. Go now. Listen, any fellow who can love a horse the way Duke loves Sammy can love a girl. Bet you. It's a bet. Now, you run along to the arena, and I'll bring the news about Sammy just as soon as there is any. Oh, Sammy, Molly. Oh, he's okay. Okay? You sure? That's what the vet said. Sammy's going to be all right. Waco, he's okay. Glory be. Oh, good doctor, that vet. Yeah. He's the man I'm going to see if I ever get sick. <laughs> Where are you going now, Molly? Hotel, I guess. Well, with a rodeo in town, hotel's usually full. Where are you staying? Over at the Mullen Hotel. I don't suppose they'd have a room there. It's just for overnight. Well, they might. Well, let's go see. Why, it doesn't look like a hotel at all, Duke. Well, it charges like one. A bunch of cabins. Oh, they look very nice. Which one did he say was mine? Number 12, right next to mine. Hey, where are you going? This is number 12. I know. 
But I usually walk before I eat. Don't you? I usually walk after I eat. People are different. Yep, they sure are. That's why they don't understand each other. Why? Because they don't know each other. Well, how could they? Hmm? How could everybody know everybody? Well, they couldn't, but they should. Well, sure, that is it. Well, huh? now look, take us, for instance. The other night when when you wanted to kiss me goodnight, I misunderstood you. So I got so mad at you, I practically hated you. But now I, I've gotten to know you a little better, and I understand you, and I, I don't hate you at all. If you wanted to kiss me goodnight now, I'd understand. Yeah. I guess you would, is that? <laughs> in fact, I can understand your feeling in the matter very clearly now. Is that a fact? Well, I thought I could. I try to understand everybody, especially if I like them. Oh, me too. Of course, it's harder for men and women to understand each other than it is for men and men. Oh, of course, by far. Except if they're in love. Then it don't matter if they understand each other or not. They think they do. Have you ever been in love? Oh, millions of times. Oh, you couldn't have been. Who couldn't? Why, nobody. How many times could you? Once. I never heard that before. Which is harder, bulldogging or calf roping? Oh, bulldogging. I've never been in love once. Especially if you miss their horns. <laughs> I'm very glad I met you, Duke. I've had a wonderful time. Well, uh, glad to have met you. It's a shame it couldn't be longer. Yeah. We might have got to be very good friends. Yeah. If we had the time. Well, we're back to my cabin. Oh, so... If you'd like to come in and... Why, I... Hey, Duke. Oh, say, where you been, Duke? I've been waiting so we could eat. Why, uh... Guess I'm not hungry. You look hungry. Uh, Duke and I decided to eat here. Where? Right here in my cabin. A little home cooking for a change, right, Duke? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is, is there a store near here? No. Well, find a one, will you, Waco? I gotta get cleaned up before we eat. And here's the store, Molly. But it ain't gonna do you a bit of good. Well, standing out here talking won't, that's for sure. Oh, let's see. I need four nice lamb chops. And... Lamb chops? What are you going to get Duke? Well, they're for Duke. He won't eat them. Oh, yes, he will. I fix them a special way. Next, you need a can of tomato juice, can of grapefruit, can of peas. I don't care how you fix them. Duke won't eat lamb chops. Half a pound of butter, a head of lettuce, some lime. It ain't going to work. It may. Anyway, it's worth trying. Oh, and I have to have some candles. Candles? Why, certainly. And some paper napkins and bread and... That just seems to cover about everything. Except dessert. What'll I get for dessert? Don't bother. Oh, here are some pastries. What's this sunset on the desert special? Mm, looks like just one more gooey mess to me. <laughs> well, I'm going to take two. And some after-dinner mints. Those you positively won't need. Why not? Mainly because there ain't gonna be no after-dinner. You can walk out right after you sees the lamb chops. And if he doesn't... In that case, heaven help you both. What's Molly fixing for dinner, Waco? Wish I could tell you. What's to stop you? My reputation. <laughs> You're crazy. Well, I ain't crazy enough to have dinner alone with no single female woman. Well, it ain't the first time I've done it. Well, it's the first time you've done it with this one. Might as well tell you, Duke. I don't approve of this whole thing. What whole thing, Grandma? Oh, the fresh shave, the clean shirt, the goo on the hair, going over there for dinner, everything. Well, a man's got to eat, don't he? Not like this, he don't. 
That little old gal over there means business. <laughs> oh, do I? Now, now, listen to me. You're a wild horse, and you ain't never been busted. But that don't mean she ain't never gonna be. Oh, sure, sure. Never a horse couldn't be rode, never a rider couldn't be throwed. Don't worry, Waco. I can take care of myself in the clinches. Yeah, maybe in the clinches. But this gal's gonna left-hand you to death. <laughs> she ain't for you, Duke. Remember how you told me? Women are like socks. You gotta change them regularly. <laughs> <laughs> this gal's different. Come on, Duke. Dinner's ready. So am I. I'm warning you, Duke. This gal's different. And you're gonna find it out. You talk like a wife, Waco. You know, I may have a surprise up my sleeve for her, too. <laughs> Come in, Duke. Your hat, please. Huh? Oh, sure. Would you like to sit in that rocker? Why, and supper ready? Oh, yes. But I thought we'd have our cocktails here. Oh, well, whatever you say. Hmm, smells good. What do we got? You'll see. After our cocktail. Here. Well, hmm. Here's to you. Thanks. Not much kick to it. It's tomato juice. <laughs> it don't taste like it. It's the way I prepare it. With lime juice. Oh. It's good this way, isn't it? Oh, yeah, very. If you can stand tomato juice. <laughs> Hungry? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, yes. Oh, well, let's start then. Anytime. Now, this is your place over here. Okay. You go ahead and sit down. I'll be right back. Right. I didn't call you until everything was ready so you wouldn't have to wait. And I hope you really brought your appetite because there's plenty of everything. Well, go right ahead, Duke. There's nothing a cook likes better than to see a man eat. What are you staring at? Lamb chops. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, they're wonderful, too. Why, I never ate lamb chops in my life. But they're good. Let's go downtown and get a steak, huh? Please try them. I don't like them. Why? I never ate them. Why? Because I don't like them. I'm a cow man. I like steak. Sorry. <laughs> I prepared them a special way, and I hope... Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I'll eat them. Hey. Hey. They're all right. I knew you'd like them. Tastes just like steak. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Don't your lights work? <laughs> of course. Well, why the candles? Awful dark in here. Well, I don't think so. They don't charge extra for the electricity. <laughs> what's so wonderful about life? Well, nothing, I guess, except I just bit my thumb. <laughs> hey. Any more lamb chops out there? No. Oh. Well, here. Have one of mine. Oh, okay. Oh, and Waco said you didn't like lamb chops. Biggest liar in the world. <laughs> Eat your salad, Duke. It's good for you. I'll get the dessert. Oh, I hope you like the dessert. It's a surprise, too. There we are. What is it, for guy's sakes? Well, I got it at the store, so it's kind of a surprise for me, too. They call it a sunset on the desert special. I couldn't help thinking of you. Me? Mm-hmm. You want your coffee now or later? Well, it don't much matter. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure to see you eat the dessert, Duke. Duke. Hmm? You know, Duke... All we've been together and all the fun we've had, and I hardly know anything about you. <laughs> you know, there's about a million things. What's the matter, Duke? Mm-hmm. You... you look funny. Oh, <laughs> Duke! The dessert's giving you luck, or something. Oh, here, here, drink some coffee. That may loosen it up. <laughs> oh. Ah! Are you, are you, 
Are you all right? Yeah, it was... It was, uh... Kind of sticky. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. It's just that I wanted to have everything perfect. Oh. Oh, Duke. Molly. I've never been kissed like that before. Uh, me either. <laughs> let's, let's clean things up around here, then maybe we can talk. We can talk and... and... Yeah. <laughs> Everything stacked in the sink, anyway, except our dessert dishes and coffee cups. I'll tie this towel around your waist so you can't ruin your clothes. Why, sure. This won't take a minute. Well, come on, slowpoke. Molly. Yes, Duke? Look in that mirror down there. Yes? What do you see? <laughs> Why, us silly. Us silly is right. Anyway, me silly. <laughs> Duke, what's the matter? I must be drunk. What? Wearing a towel for an apron, wiping dishes. I am drunk. I ain't had a drink all night and I'm drunk. Gosh, I thought we were... I know what you thought, Molly, only you thought wrong. I guess you don't want any more than any other girl wants, but you come to the wrong place, Molly. I ain't built that way. Built what way? I ain't gonna get hooked. That's what way. Hooked? Maybe this kind of stuff works where you come from, but don't work around here. Now, let me alone. Quit trying to hook me. I wasn't trying. I got my own way of living. I don't want nobody changing it. That isn't what I was... And... Now, don't start crying. Oh, who's crying? Now, just let me finish. If... Well, if, if I wanted to get hooked, Molly, I'd let you hook me. I don't know. Nobody else I would. But I don't want to get hooked. Goodbye, Molly. <laughs> I just missed the bus, Flory, that's all. It, it happens. To you, maybe. To me, never. <laughs> hey, where's your cowboy? I don't have any cowboy. Oh, you got rid of him, huh? Gee, I wish you'd tell me where you throw your old boyfriend. <laughs> uh, are you going to tell me everything? Well, there's nothing to tell. Molly, look. I read three concession magazines a month. I am a very sophisticated woman. You can tell me everything. Thing. Well, the days were breathless, all right. Oh, I knew it. And the nights, Molly. <laughs> Cold enough to give a horse pneumonia. Well, folks, this brings us to the end of our little adventure. I'm sure you're all going to remember your 14 breathless days at one of the high spots of your life. <laughs> With no fellas. Oh, now, please, Miss Bendix, there are some things more important than fellas. Not to girls. Come on, Molly, let's go. Well, I must say this is my favorite part of the whole trip. Now, remember, Molly, in case you get stuck, you know, some night for an extra female, you got my number. Okay, Flory. Well... Look, Molly. What? Coming toward us, the camera buster, Duke. Hi, Molly. Oh, how did you get here? What, well, Duke, I thought you were... I know what you thought. Oh, Duke, Duke, put me down. You can't carry me in a bus station. Who says I can't? Why, well, nobody, I guess. <laughs> Nothing happened, huh? <laughs> where are you carrying me, Duke? Right back where you come from. Night so cold they give a horse pneumonia. <laughs> what are you doing in New York, Duke? Well, I told you. I came to take you back. Well, right now? Awful soon. Trip 49 is ready on driveway two for Pittsburgh, Columbus, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Tulsa, Amarillo, Tucum, Cary, Phoenix, and Los Angeles. On the board, please. Now. Come on. Duke, Duke, what's Flory going to think? Well, now, stop dragging me. Now, now, look, just a minute, Duke. I'm not going anyplace. What's the matter with you anyway? You must be crazy. Well, haven't I got anything to say about it? I am not getting back on a bus, I can tell you that. I just got off a bus. Well, who do you think you are anyway? 
This is New York City, you know. You just can't come charging in here and decide everything for everybody. If you want to talk things over, we'll, we'll say so. Just because you've made up your mind, it doesn't mean you've made up everybody's mind. It doesn't mean you've made up my mind. You better hold your own ticket here. Gee whiz, you're certainly taking a lot for granted. Well, I'm not even sure I should be speaking to you after all the things you... But I'll tell you one thing, I'm certainly not getting on any bus. Uh, give the man your ticket. Here. You first, Molly. No, no, Duke, I mean it. If, if you want to sit uh, down... Look out for that step. I see it. Sit down and talk a few things over. Well, that's one thing. Now, give me your suitcase so I can put it on the rack. But huh? if you think that I'm going to go through again what I just went through before, well, you're certainly mistaken, Duke. I know. Listen, Duke, even if I changed my mind, and even if I wanted to go back with you, I couldn't. I'd lose my job. You'll never miss it. Hmm? I got a job for you. What kind of a job? A fired Waco. Oh! I'd like to have your attention, folks, for just a minute. You're going to have my attention for the next 14 days, so it isn't too much to ask, is it? I <laughs> know, that's what I thought of. 14 days? <laughs> Duke, we, we aren't going to take the same trip I just came back from. Sure, we'll get married when the bus stops for an hour in Phoenix. Oh, not till then. But that, that's almost the end of the trip. No, not quite. We'll still have the Columbia Gorge, the Pacific Ocean... Puget Sound. And, oh, and, and the waterfalls of seven delights. <laughs> Thank you, John Lund and Joan Caulfield, for a most exciting performance. Our stars will return in just a moment. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse will bring you an adaptation of the beautiful screenplay, Only Yesterday. And our stars will be Mercedes McCambridge and Jeff Chandler. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Joan Caulfield and John Lund, with Screen Director William Sider. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm sure now you all understand what I meant earlier when I said, with John Lund as a co-star, no lady takes oh, a chance. Oh, cut, Joan, cut. Well, what's wrong, John? Well, two things, Joan. In the first place, you embarrass me. Oh. And in the second, the praise should be reserved for the man who originally brought the characters to life. The director of such entertaining pictures as Hired Wife and the Affairs of Susan, William Sider. John. Yes, Bill? Now, you're embarrassing me. After all, it was you and Joan who brought Duke and Molly to life for our radio audience. In fact, I've often wondered why Frank had never before permitted Lady Take a Chance to be broadcast. Well, Frank told me why, Bill. It was because he was afraid that radio could never recapture the charm of the piece as you directed it. He's a great admirer of yours. Well, that's very flattering. I hope that he realizes now how mistaken he's been about keeping his stories off the air. We hope so, too, Bill. Well, if he does, it will mean many more pleasant hours for Screen Director's Playhouse. Good night, Joan. Good, Good night, Joan. Good night, Phil. Good night. Lady Takes a Chance was presented through the courtesy of Frank Ross. John Lund can currently be seen co-starring with Joan Fontaine in the Paramount production, Darling, How Could You? Joan Caulfield may soon be seen with David Niven in the Ross Stillman production, The Lady Says No. William Sider's current release for Paramount is Dear Brat. Included in tonight's cast were Gigi Pearson, Jim Backus, Whitfield Connor, Horace Murphy, Tony Barrett, and Herb Butterfield. Lady Takes a Chance was adapted for radio by Bill Hampton. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced under the supervision of Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking, and inviting you to listen again next Thursday when the Screen Director's Playhouse will bring you Only Yesterday, starring Mercedes McCambridge and Jeff Chandler, with Screen Director Albert Rogel. Tomorrow, you too can live the life of Riley on NBC. NBC.